When we run, we actually expose our bodies to forces that are three to eight times our body weight. And obviously our feet are the primary contact with the ground. So the ability of our feet to absorb, tolerate and distribute loads will play a huge role in our overall running performance and longevity. So this routine will take you through some of the fundamentals of foot function, as well as some key integration drills to improve balance and coordination. This can be a perfect standalone mini movement session, or it can also be great as a warm up for your run. So let's get stuck in. First up, we've got some toe stretches in the quadruped position. So quadruped is just on all fours, hands under shoulders, knees under hips and we are wanting to have our toes up in extension, as you can see. From here, we're just rocking our hips back towards our heels, which will create more of an extension stretch. So this is the first variation. It's obviously the easiest and gives you the most control over how much you stretch your toes. So rocking forward and back, forward and back, and you can also play with a hold down at this bottom position and find that point of stretch for you. So this is what you'll be doing for the first 30 seconds to a minute. And you, what you can do as well with this, if you want a bit more of a challenge, is to lift your knees off the ground and rock forward and back like that. This adds more of a core and shoulder stability challenge while still stretching out those toes. That big toe extension is really important for our running efficiency and the way our feet load through running. So really important to have adequate big toe extension. You can also, with that one, have your hands further out, knees are lifted, and pushing forward and back like so. You end up in this sort of push-up position. So that's the first minute playing with those variations. And then for the second minute, it's still getting that same quadruped, or the same toe stretch in this position. Your knees are up and then you're aiming to lift one limb at a time. So you might start with your left leg and you're just hovering that foot off for a few seconds and then going to your right leg. Hovering. And then you could go to your left arm hovering. And then right arm. So this is really challenging your stability. What you want to minimize, if I show you from the front, is when you lift a hand or a leg that you minimize this twisting of the trunk. You will get some shift naturally, but you want to minimize that over time, the more you practice. And then you can also do a contralateral lift. So that would be right hand and left leg or left foot lifting at the same time. So really great way to build this contralateral coordination, which we actually use in running, while also stretching out the toes. So once you've done a total of two minutes with those exercises, you can move on to the next one. Next up, we've got A-frame pumps. So you'll be starting in this similar position, but then you're lifting your hips up into the air into what's known as an A-frame position, or you may know it as a downward dog position. From there, you can keep your knees bent Ideally, you're keeping your spine relatively straight, and then you're just taking one heel to the ground and one heel up in the opposite direction, and then swapping like so. So you'll likely feel a stretch through your calf and hamstring on this bottom leg, and then you're getting more of that toe extension on the other side. Nice and slow and controlled, and trying to keep this hip position relatively steady the entire time. If at any point you need to come down and reset, come back up, feel free. 
but otherwise you're aiming for a minute in this position, in this movement, before moving on to the next one. Next up, we've got some split squat holds. So a split squat, basically a lunge, taking one foot forward, one foot back, and then we're bringing this knee down towards the ground. And we should end up in a roughly 90 degree, 90 degree position here, keeping your back or your trunk nice and upright. And what we're getting here is obviously some of that toe extension that we have been working on. We're getting some hip extension, which both of which are very important for running efficiency. And we're getting some leg strengthening or activation going through the quadriceps and the glutes. So we're holding on one side for 30 seconds, up to 30 seconds. If you need to come back out, have a break after 10 seconds and then go back in, that's fine. Over time, ideally build up to 30 seconds on one side and then just repeat on the other side. Check in regularly with the position of your trunk. Have you started to lean forward? Are you able to straighten up more? Are you able to get these shoulders back a bit more? Check in with your breathing and check in with your depth as well. So you may start more like this and see if over time you can build that depth to go lower and lower, obviously without actually touching the ground with this back knee. Once you've done up to 30 seconds on each side, then you can move on to the next one. Okay, next up we're going through some weird walks. So this is just some different walking patterns that activate different muscles in the feet and the legs. So coming up onto our tiptoe for a tiptoe walk to start, you can just walk up and back. On a yoga mat is great, otherwise just some distance, it's quite arbitrary. As long as you're staying up in this position for 30 seconds is what we're aiming for. You can do tiptoe, you could also try and lift up like that with each step. 30 seconds on that one, then we'll go the opposite, which is heel walks. So now we're more activating the front of our shins and applying some pressure through our heels, obviously. Trying to keep those toes up as high as you possibly can for the entire 30 seconds. You'll feel a bit weird, a bit funny doing these, but you'll also start to feel these muscles really activating, which is perfect for running. They actually help our feet decelerate movement as we load. So next one, we're going a pinky toe walk. So as far out onto the pinky toes as you can. This is getting our ankles into inversion. Great way to build resilience in this position. This is the position that most people sprain their ankles in. So the more you can get resilience there, you may need to build up your range of motion, but over time, if you can get more and more range of motion, you'll be more and more resilient. Perfect thing to do if you have had ankle sprains in the past, but even from a preventative point of view, this can be helpful. And the last walk for 30 seconds is a big toe walk. So we're actually getting into the big toe alignment and then walking up and down. So this is getting our ankles into eversion and what's known as foot pronation, which many people sort of try to avoid, but pronation is actually a really important movement of the foot for building springiness, especially when it comes to running and jumping. So we actually do want strength and control and mobility in that range. And that big toe walk is a great way to sort of exaggerate that movement. And you will start to feel these muscles in your arch really light up. So 30 seconds on each of those weird walks, and then you can move on. Okay, next up we have sprinters, which are essentially a balance drill that incorporate the coordination of running or sprinting. 
and it looks like this. So as we run, walk, crawl, etc., then we have this contralateral movement. So the sprinter movement is this leg coming back, this arm coming forward. You can touch if you need to, but try to just keep that leg straight and then you're coming up into this position, opposite leg, opposite arm, high above, down, up. So you can go nice and slow at first, just to build that coordination and the balance. Obviously this is all happening on one leg, which is a balance challenge. And obviously running is a series of single leg balances, very short single leg balances, but nonetheless, you do need good single leg stability. We'll go 30 seconds on one side, change to the other side. We'll be doing two sets on each side. So nice and slow and controlled for these first two sets. I'm getting obviously all of that single leg stability, I'm getting some hip flexor activation. Foot arch control. So a lot of goodness in this one. 30 seconds on each side and then we'll repeat and you can try to play with the speed a little bit. So from here, you can try and snap up and that speed will actually make it harder to stabilize at the top. And you could go down, up, down, up, down, up. And that's where it starts to get a bit more like a sprinter. But if you can't quite get that speed at the moment, that's fine, keep it slow and even just just getting a little more speed into the movement is good to mix things up. 30 seconds and then last 30 seconds, still playing with that speed. Trying to get full lockout at the top. So we don't want this leg sort of doing this. We want that knee fully straight, not necessarily hyperextended, but just off that. So fully straight without completely hyperextending like that. And this leg coming as high as possible. So two sets of 30 seconds on each side for that one, and then you can move on. Okay, next up we've got heel hovers. So we also call this ninja stance when we're on the soulmate, but doing this on flat ground, all you're doing is taking your upper body and leaning forward as far as you can. You'll feel your toes squeeze into the ground to stabilize. Now what we do want is some clenching essentially of the toes where they're pushing into the ground, but we don't want clawing where they're coming up like that. So they shouldn't lose any length really, they just will flatten into the ground. And your heels will come up off the ground slightly and then you're actually really trying to grip the ground with your toes and you're just holding this for up to a minute. You can have a rest if you need to after 10, 15 seconds and then reset, leaning forward and then you can also play with keeping this stable foundation and then moving your hips back into a hinge. And you could also go hinging back and then even shifting, I'll show you from the, this position, shifting to one side, lifting, replacing. It's a really great way to build strength and control in the feet and ankles and some load tolerance through the forefoot, which you will need during certain types of running, especially if you're increasing your speed, going uphill, etc. So total of one minute 
playing with that exercise and then you can move on. Okay, last up we've got a minute of pogo bouncing. So we're just actually gonna start with some heel bounces where you're not actually lifting your forefoot off the ground, but you're just kissing the ground with the heels like this, building that springiness. This springiness is very important for running. And if this is where you have to stay, that's completely fine. If you can start to bring the forefoot off the ground and just bounce, 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 like your jumping rope, then do that. And as you bounce, you bounce up, try and lift the toe up like that. So that is a double leg pogo bounce. You could also go alternating like that for extra challenge. Eventually you could do single leg as well, which gets very challenging. And either way, whichever variation you pick, you can play with a few of them if you like, but a total of one minute for your pogo bounces and then you've finished up your routine. Thanks for watching. If you're getting value out of these videos, please like and subscribe. That really helps support our channel and we do put out videos like this every week. And if you're looking for more structured programs and guidance from TFC Pros, then we do have our TFC Explorer membership that you can find out all the details below in the description.